<laughs> this is the first time we've actually discovered where do the smolts go once they leave their nasal rivers or sea locks. There's a lot of research in river in sea locks, but once they leave that area, we don't actually know where they go. So this is the first time we've been able to tell this is the route that they're taking. We learned two things. In terms of direction, as they leave their natal rivers, they, they move out and they, we know they have to head north, but they, they would appear to be spreading out in several directions uh, and there's no clear defined pathways. Secondly, and the speed that they're going, we've seen that they're hanging around in the estuaries and in the sea locks for longer than we were envisaging. It's very important that, that we know where they're going when they're in the marine environment in case there are actions going on in the marine environment that we can influence to make sure that their safety is, 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 is kept all the way through their migration. Really for us, we would like to know more about um, where our smolts are going. Um, it's to do with the development of inshore renewables and also aquaculture development on the west coast. So really we want to know how those will interact with our fish. In year two, we wanted to have a look at the speed and directions of movement as they were moving through the sea loch. And so we moved inshore um, closer and focused our areas in the sky to mull area. Deployment was good. We got some good weather to get everything out to sea. Logistically, we managed to trap and tag the fish, again, with overwhelming support from the local River Boards and Trust. 90 volunteers, there were 90 people outside of that system that gave up their time to help us. So we're going to have more depth of detail, if you like, or better picture uh, of the, the time taken for those smolts to pass through the Firth of Lawn, around the west side of the Isle of Mull, and also through the Sound of Mull. So we now know where they're going, but we don't know how they got there. So this is the next stage in that puzzle. The West Coast Tracking Project is a fantastic example of collaborative effort between Fisheries Management Scotland, the Atlantic Salmon Trust and Marine Scotland. It wouldn't have been possible without our member boards and trusts supporting the tagging of fish and also the deployment and recovery of acoustic receivers across the West Coast. The project really is aiming to collect a whole lot of information about where our smolts go when they leave Scotland's coastal waters and will help us to inform policy makers so that they can take informed decisions about future developments along our coastline and make sure we can secure a stronger future for our wild salmon. So the Scottish Government is committed to evidence-based policy and regulation and the, the results of the West Coast tracking project are going to be incredibly important in that context. So it's not just the results on their own that are important, but the way that they dovetail with other science that is ongoing. So for example, we're generating models of the distribution of sea lice in the West Coast. And we can overlay those with the, the models of just where the smolts are from the West Coast tracking projects and other work. And we can see the instances where fish are most vulnerable to lice. Uh, and indeed, uh, where they might be vulnerable to other activities such as, as new marine renewable developments as those go ahead.